what we're looking at here is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field image. And this is the deepest image that has ever been taken of our universe. It looks farther into our universe than we have ever been able to see before. And this picture was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope and the size of the piece of sky that this covers is about the same size as the tip of a pen held at arm's length. So if you took the ball out of a ballpoint pen and held it at arm's length, you would be able to cover up approximately this region of the sky. And what we see in this image are approximately 10,000 different galaxies in just that tiny patch of sky. In this image, all of these tiny little specks are not individual stars, they are individual galaxies. And some of these galaxies date back to the very early universe, some around seven or 800 million years after the Big Bang is when the light from these galaxies was actually emitted. So at least for me, this is truly an awe-inspiring image, both in that it gives us a, just a tiny sense of how many galaxies there are in the universe and just how large a place the universe is, and in that we've actually been able to develop the technology and the techniques to take an image like this and to try to learn more about the universe through, these, through studying these kinds of images. But for the purposes of trying to measure cosmic distances, we notice that for these extremely distant galaxies, we are not going to be able to resolve individual sources, at least with current technologies. So even for the brightest supernova, if I have some galaxy here and a supernova occurs in it, it's just too far away to accurately be able to measure that supernova. So if we want to measure the distances to these galaxies, we need a different technique. And the last kind of rung on the cosmic distance ladder is actually going to use the fact that the universe is expanding as part of a tool for measuring cosmic distances. And this tool is referred to as redshift or perhaps more accurately, cosmological redshift. Now, there's gonna be a little bit of overlap between this video and the video in the Big Bang series, but I'm gonna to try to keep this discussion uh, limited to how we use this as a method of measuring distances, so please bear with me. So let's say I have the universe at some time, and I have some source of light, some distant galaxy, and over here we have the Earth. And this source of light is going to emit a beam of light. And that beam of light has a certain wavelength, the wavelength of the emitted light. Now, as this beam of light moves towards the Earth, the universe actually expands. The universe is going to expand, so we have a larger universe after. And we have our source, and we have the Earth. These two objects have moved away from each other. And as the universe expands, what happens is the wavelength of this beam of light is going to expand as well. So now this is the wavelength of the light that we actually observe. So this is uh, the wavelength that we observe. And since this wavelength is longer, it's going to be in the redder part of the spectrum compared to where the emitted light was. So we refer to this uh, change in wavelength as the redshift. We denote it by the letter Z, and we say this is equal to, or just defined as, the observed wavelength minus the emitted wavelength over the emitted wavelength. So this is what the redshift is. Now, this effect that the wavelength that we observe is different than the wavelength that's emitted can also be seen if we have a source that's moving away from us. So you can interpret this as the source is moving away from us at a certain speed v. And just to get the units right, we'll do v over the speed of light. Now we can actually relate this redshift to how far away the source is. Because if I had a source that's farther away, then it's going to take the light a longer time to reach the Earth. And in that longer time, the universe will have expanded by a greater amount, thereby making this redshift more pronounced. So if I have a relatively nearby source, and by relatively nearby I mean measured in hundreds of millions of light years away, and rather than 
many billions of light years away. This is approximately equal to the distance to the source times the Hubble constant over the speed of light. So if I can measure the redshift of a distant galaxy, and I can determine what the Hubble parameter is, I can use this equation to solve for the distance to that galaxy. Now, in measuring this redshift, we might say, well, the wavelength of light that I observe, I can understand how I measure that. But how do I know what the wavelength of light was that was actually emitted from the source that is so far away? Well, to answer that question, we have to look at the spectrum of the light that we see coming from this source. Now, if you watch the video on spectral lines, you'll know that if I have different chemicals present in this source, they will, those chemicals will produce spectral lines, these black bars in the spectrum that we see from that object. And they will produce these bars at very, very specific wavelengths. So hydrogen will have a certain set of spectral lines, helium will have a different set, and they are all very clearly identifiable. Now, if this is the light that was actually emitted, then what we observe is all of those spectral lines from, say, hydrogen and helium, but they will all be shifted a certain amount from what we would expect. So we can take each of these spectral lines and figure out how much those lines have shifted, and that exactly corresponds to this redshift. So once we get the spectrum of light from our distant galaxy, it's actually quite easy to measure the redshift. Now, in order to measure this Hubble parameter, what we have to do is look at nearby galaxies that we do know the distance to through maybe Cepheid variables or perhaps supernova and look at their redshift and plot the redshift versus the distance to that galaxy. And when we do that, uh, for at least nearby galaxies, we'll get something like this. So we have redshift versus distance, and we see that most of these galaxies lie along the same line. There's a little bit of deviation due to the peculiar motions of the galaxies. They can move not just with the uh, expansion of the universe, but have a little bit of other motion as well. But we see that these lie on a fairly well-defined line. And the slope of this line actually corresponds to what the Hubble parameter is. So we can actually measure this as well. So now we really have everything we need to use this. We know how to measure the redshift to very distant galaxies, and we've measured the Hubble parameter that describes the current expansion rate of the universe. So we can use this to measure distances of galaxies that are more than hundreds of millions of light years away. So we can basically take this graph and extend this line uh, so, such that if we measure the redshift of the galaxy, we can basically look over and read off what the distance to that galaxy has to be. Now, there are some difficulties associated with this. First, for the nearby galaxies, we notice that individual galaxies can have peculiar motions that are independent of the expansion of the universe. So they aren't just moving with the expansion of the universe, they can have their own motions as well. And that will result in a slightly different redshift than what we would know normally expect. So that can introduce an error into our distance calculation. Additionally, back when I wrote down Hubble's law, I said that this equation was approximately true, specifically when we were within a billion light years of the source. And what happens when you're more than a billion light years away is little correction terms start to uh, crop up. So corrections. And these corrections come from the fact that the rate of expansion of the universe is different today than it was billions of years ago. So we have to determine what these correction terms actually are. And the way that we do that is by looking at the most distant supernova that we can. More and more distant supernova are going to have higher redshifts and if we can measure the differences between the luminosity distance measured by the supernova and the distance we get using this equation, we can determine what some of these corrections are. And that will not only help us calibrate this equation better to use it to measure more and more distant objects, but will also tell us more 
about the evolution of the universe. So this becomes a very powerful tool and was actually the way that it was discovered that the expansion of our universe is actually accelerating by measuring very distant supernova and determining what some of these correction terms are. So this redshift is really the way that we have for measuring the distances to some of the most distant galaxies. And very often in, in the scientific literature, instead of saying that a galaxy is a certain number of light years away, sometimes they will just quote what the redshift is. So it's really the method that we use to measure the most distant objects in the universe.